Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Militaria. Today we are looking at the small broom handle, and that is the broom handle known as a bolo. That's This is a gun that was allegedly mostly used by Soviet Bolsheviks, and so it has gotten the name bolo among the collector community. Uh, they're actually just a shortened version of the, of the broom handle. They were made well before the uh, Russian Revolution, actually. So the first uh, guns that were the size of a bolo were actually in the cone hammer range. You saw some, some very uh, small guns and even six shot guns, which had a very short magazine and usually a shorter barrel like this, as well as uh, usually a, a smaller grip. And then certainly by the early 1900s, smaller broom handles were uh, being produced, not in great numbers, but they were produced. Uh, the gun that most people associate as the Bolo really came into its own after World War I. And that's when a lot of these were actually made and, and tens of thousands were actually turned out. And they were a fairly common uh, gun to be found at that time. A lot of them went to China, a lot of them kind of got distributed worldwide, and so they do show up fairly frequently, uh, usually in pretty poor condition. This one is actually an unfired example. Um, you can tell it's pretty much got all its original blue. It's got all its uh, original varnish here on the grips. And uh, turn it over and take a look at this. You've got your fire blue all along it and your really nice fire blue on the uh, extractor as well and just everything is in very nice shape on this one so this is a good example to just sort of look at of, a, of what a post world war one bolo looked like this gun was made uh, in the 1920s i would probably date it to about the mid 1920s based on the serial number uh, the first thing that Mauser started doing a little bit different is they put their logo in a banner right here on the side panel and your serial number uh, stayed right up here and you had your commercial proof which is always going to be on pretty much all broom handles right here and even on these now not all of them but a lot of them still retain this kind of optimistic uh, one to a thousand uh, sight. So that's out to a thousand meters and it's a tangent sight with your uh, slider there. And uh, you'd put your shoulder stock on and allegedly be able to shoot that far, certainly farther than I could shoot on one of these. And your front sight on these is a little bit different than our regular uh, broom handle. You have your uh, crowned barrel. So, uh, uh, a regular full-size broom handle doesn't have this little ridge right here. Uh, as I said, these were just made to be more handy. They do still hold 10 rounds, just like a, a full-size broom handle, but uh, the barrel is shorter. The gun itself is still the same size in terms of the body, but the grip is a smaller grip. Um, which is okay. It still retains that sort of non-ergonomic uh, broom handle shape, but it is just smaller and actually kind of fits awkwardly in the hand. They're not the most comfortable guns to shoot. And you do retain your uh, lanyard ring, which was standard on pretty much all broom handles. This one is cut for a shoulder stock. And as a matter of fact, it uh, has a shoulder stock. Unfortunately, it is not featured in this video, but this gun does have a match stock. And your serial number is repeated there and there, as is typical. And then you've got your NS for new safety, which would be on uh, standard up until really pretty much the 1930 commercial came out, so about 1930. You've got uh, your serial numbered hammer um, you've got your really nice fire blue on the bolt stop here and Mauser kept their name on the side as they 
pretty much always had all through the wartime commercials and even before that you had the this here so really not a lot had changed on these other than the side or the size i'm sorry and there's really not going to be any marks on this side uh, certainly you're not going to find german military acceptance proofs or anything like that on these uh, so these were made for the commercial market one thing that you will see on a fair amount of these is a made in germany stamp which i uh, don't believe this one has yeah there's no made in germany stamp on this one uh, those were guns that were obviously made in germany for export to uh, countries which had fought against them in world war one uh, if they say made in germany they're usually made for export to america germany would just be export to pretty much anywhere you'll find both stamps uh, it doesn't particularly add any value or certainly subtract any value uh, just know that if you see that stamp it does mean generally that it was done at the time of manufacture it wasn't added later or anything like that um, again the fit and finish on these is pretty spectacular it definitely rivals anything pre-war that mauser did they're just really good looking guns uh, the inner workings of course inside are exactly the same you've got your hammer uh, with your uh, safety here in the up position is going to be safe down position is going to be fire and you can see when you're in the safe position it actually retracts your hammer off the firing pin and then the in the fire position it lowers it down but that hammer really isn't going anywhere uh, this one take a look at the firing pin and once again this gun has been cleared so i'm not i know it's not loaded since i cleared it right before i did this video there's your firing pin your hammer falls on that your inertia goes all the way through so it's a really super long firing pin through the entire bolt and then hits your primer there and your gun cycles as normal uh, a lot of these apparently went to soviet russia and were used by the bolsheviks at least that's the story great story but there's not a lot of evidence that they were uh, used on any number of uh, formal contracts or anything like that, certainly. It seems to be just as they were acquired by uh, uh, Soviet leaders and officers, they were used. Um, apparently, there is a rumor that Soviet Russia sent a lot of them to China. Um, certainly the Chinese did like these and they used a lot of them, but they also bought a lot from Mauser as well. So really the veracity of that is a little bit questionable, not saying it didn't happen, but it's hard to tell. Uh, there are a lot of pictures of uh, Russian, both white and wet red soldiers using these, uh, not necessarily bolos, but broom handles in general. So they were popular there, but the amount that actually went versus the amount that say came to america or went to england or just kind of around the world to other countries is again kind of questionable it does seem like a fair amount of them ended up in scandinavia they uh certainly are pretty popular in finland and switzerland i know had a lot um but they're just a, an interesting gun that kind of went everywhere and this is the bolo version so the small version and uh not a very handy gun I mean it i guess it handles okay but it that grip just feels really small in the hand especially when you're shooting something like a 763 mauser which has kind of a, a hard kick to it so uh a, an interesting variant but uh ultimately probably not one of the ones that most people wanted to run around and, and carry for shooting uh probably better for i would guess concealed carry as a policeman or something like that maybe holster duty all day but uh hope you've enjoyed seeing a nice example of one of these um, they do exist they are out there and if you have one i would love to hear about it so post in the comments and like and subscribe and if there's something broom handle related you would like to hear about uh, post in the comments as well. Thank you for watching.